More than six years ago, a small group of forward-thinking individuals from Claremont Graduate University and the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians recognized a trend in the management of tribal governments. It seemed that those who were being hired as managers by the tribal government and the San Manuel Indian Bingo Casino were bright, eager, and educated, but were lacking in their knowledge of the management of a tribal government as opposed to just a business enterprise. When we started talking about setting this up six years ago, uh, there were three or four interrelated goals. One, as I just said, was dealing with the history, complicated history of American culture and politics, and, and uh, especially as they relate to Native Americans. Uh, secondly, was to was to uh, develop uh, within the, the, the tribal employees and tribal members a deeper sense of the specific ways in which their own lives that they lead every day relate to this larger uh, political order of which they're a part. The essential requirement for them to take responsibility for everything that happens in their organization. And thirdly, to teach them very specific and practical skills that they can apply in their everyday activities, uh, uh, in, 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 their, in their employment. And then I want to equip them so they're able to understand why things are happening and how they can react constructively to whatever is happening. So accept responsibility. In fact, I hope they relish in the challenges that comes along with managing that, that instead of seeing things happen and, and saying, woe was me, they see things that are happening and understand that there's a constructive way to respond to that and actually for them to understand that's a normal part of managing. And that spins into a fourth thing, actually, and I think this is true. Uh, uh, we talked about this somewhat vaguely at first, and I'm now convinced that it's actually so. One of the things that could have been a problem and turns out to be a great success is the fact that the class is made up entirely of people who work for the same organization. In the, in the uh, 70, 75 students that have come through this course, of course, there is a building of an esprit de corps among them. Uh, all organizations tend to live in silos, you know, on this silo, and this silo, and this silo. Really effective organizations figure out ways in which there's cross-communication among people in different departments, whatever. In fact, we've gone beyond that to create a situation where they develop a strong cohort, to learn to trust one another, share their experiences with one, one another, and, 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 and what that, that leads to, again, what I hope my class does for Sam Manuel is to create a a cohort of managers who are really able to uh, work effectively together and help the tribe achieve outstanding results. And I think one of the, the consequences of this program is that it gives those who have participated a greater sense of the larger organization of which they're a part uh, uh, and, and creates friendships and bonds that would not have existed otherwise. It tends to break down the silo walls in very useful ways. And I think it's a great uh, builder of corporate culture that will benefit, benefit the tribe in the years ahead. So to have a, the, a group of managers who look to the future to, to think about how they can do their jobs better, to help San Manuel be more effective and, and, um, you know, and really help San Bernardino is, a, is an honor to be a part of that. And, um, and so what do I want to see happen? I want to see the managers make San Manuel stronger and make their community stronger. And I think we've got lots of uh, lots of projects in the past that, and managers who are making that happen. It, it really has. The program has given me the ability to understand the tribe's goals and expectations. Therefore, uh, my decision process. I know are in line with the uh, tribe's goals. I see in the program is uh, it it gives you the for a lot of supervisors it, it gives a management training that I think is at the uh, master's level which is very valuable for many of the employees that we have here uh, but also it gives a history of the tribe and it talks about the, the struggles that the tribe has had to deal with over the many years and coming from um, being raised in Southern California, I had a very limited knowledge of, of the Indian tribes in the area and the relationship with the tribes. And for me, um, having been within the first six months of my 
employment, it gave me a much better perspective and I learned a lot of things that I didn't know uh, about the tribe prior to being here. So the program has allowed me to receive a deep appreciation and understanding of the tribe's history and culture. So I'll give you an example. When I review applications that come from tribal governments and they have to do with culture or language programs, I now understand how critical these issues are. But since I attended the uh, class, I paid more attention to why, what kind of machines would, you know, for the customer, satisfying the customer. So it's not just putting machines in the, in the building, it's what the customer likes, learning what they like, um, providing good service, also make sure that the machines are maintained, otherwise there's no purpose of having machines if we're not keeping them maintained and, um, you know, something good for the customer. It's allowed me to be promoted. I find that my thoughts are in conjunction with the industries and the tribe's goals. My managers and director clearly see that since I joined the program, I've made different decisions. Uh, my thought process is a lot different because I've been exposed to what the tribe believes we should be doing, uh, their expectations, of course. A deeper understanding of the larger world of American politics uh, in which they live. Uh, America, as, as everybody knows, is a very complicated place. And what I, what I try to do is to unpack that and to make it clear uh, how this complicated system has very real effects uh, on the lives of, of, of the students and of the institutions they work for. And this is particularly important in respect of, of uh, Native Americans. Uh, who are part and parcel of this rich and complicated history, not all of which is pretty, uh, but some of which is. Uh, and to understand it in its full complexity, and how the students themselves and the, uh, and the organization they work for fit into this complicated mosaic of American politics, to give them a deeper and richer understanding of this, so that they can lead better lives and, and, and make the world a better place for their kids. I would have to say the Supreme Court and their attack on tribal sovereignty. It's very interesting to learn um, the history of the Supreme Court and how their attack on tribal sovereignty is still a form of conquest on tribes. Specifically, uh, their struggles and their sacrifices that they have to make to be where they're at now, a successful tribe. Now that I've paid more attention, um, they're very strong in philanthropic type programs, and it's not just locally. I'm from upstate New York, and there's a casino there called Turning Stone, and I understand, of course my mother told me this, um, I understand that they support a golf tournament, and that's, so it's funny that my casino now is home. Um, so I, I'm very proud of the fact that they're very strong as far as giving to the community. Determination that the tribe has shown over years from basic survival um, to continue to, to strive for sovereignty and the many obstacles that they've, they've had to deal with from racism to intergovernment uh, interactions. It's really, it's, in a sense, it's, it's really thinking about what sovereignty means in a practical way. Uh, the United States isn't going to go away. Native Americans aren't going to go away. They're going to have to live with one another. Uh, and, uh, uh, and do it in a way that, that it respects uh, the rights and privileges of both. Uh, there is a certain sphere of sovereignty, clearly, that Native Americans are entitled to. It wasn't always recognized. It is now. There's been a great maturation in legal developments on this front, all to the good. Uh, but how that works out on a practical level, detail level, uh, is a story that's still being written. And one of the things in the long run we would hope to accomplish in a course like this is to work out those details. Well, how exactly uh, in this situation or that practical situation, what does sovereignty mean? What do the legal arguments mean on both sides? How do tribes have to deal with Congress and the courts to work out practical problems? This is real mature politics of the sort that hasn't been played by, by Native Americans in a long, long time. And I think it's terrific. It's a very exciting time 
be uh, addressing this issue. And there's a lot going on intellectually and politically, and it's a fascinating period. Is the challenge to their sovereignty. Um, I think a lot of, you know, even the, the city and the, the county governments, they struggling to try to figure out where the tribe fits in. And instead of having a government-to-government -government relationship with the federal government, which is the way it's supposed to be, they struggle. Every government sees them as a, a peer level. Uh, and I think you see that significantly when you look at the casino and the attempts by federal, state, and local agencies to, you know, tax the, uh, the profits and, and to gain uh, some financial gain from that operation. We deal with the past a uh, fair amount. I do some history, I do some philosophy, I do some politics, I do some law in the course. Uh, and, but it's a mistake to dwell on the past. Terrible things were done in the past to Native Americans. We know this. And it's good to be reminded of it. But we don't want to live there. Uh, and we don't live there. Tremendous progress has been made in the past 30, 40 years especially. But, but when you and, really want people to give their very best, you've got you've to lead it. We, we no longer are managing workers, we're now leading workers. And we're in an age where workers know probably better than the people they report to what needs to be done on the job. They're knowledge workers, they're supposed to be the experts. And so, so we've got to get them to identify and take responsibility for, for, for the action that's needed that's best for the tribe. And, that, and that's called leading and that's what we teach them. A new mature understanding of the role of Native Americans within the American political system. Uh, deep appreciation for their specific contributions, and I think an increased sophistication on the part of Native Americans of uh, uh, how they fit into the system and how they can take advantage of it for their own betterment and for the betterment of the nation of which they're a part. Yes, I would definitely recommend this program to other people. I believe it provides knowledge that only an academic institution and a setting can provide. I think that I've been I've been with San Manuel for 10 years and being here for 10 years, the program, the certificate program has provided me knowledge that I haven't received in these 10 years and that I feel make me a better employee here. Not only would I recommend it to others, I have. I've actually recently talked to all my command staff and recommended them to do it, to attend. Uh, several sergeants and supervisors I've encouraged to attend uh, and, and I think it's a great opportunity for us to get uh, an in-depth history and knowledge of the tribe. Uh, at the same time, you know, the, the management experience that we gained for supervisors is, is tremendous. And Dr. Decker is probably one of the best management uh, instructors I've had in the many years that I've dealt with this. So both on a uh, professional basis as well as knowledge of the, the uh, tribe, I think it's a tremendous course. I have. I definitely recommend it to my new supervisors um, since I've been and since I am a graveyard. That was one of the challenges. A lot of them uh, off shift, but you know, there's other people in our department that went to the program and uh, I totally support it for them to learn more about not just their little part of the operation, you know, really learning more about the tribe and how they impact the casino? Yes, I would. Uh, the program exposes you to the tribe. It exposes you to intergovernmental relationships. It exposes you to frames of management style. Uh, all that collectively make you a better manager, I believe. So the question is, uh, what could be done with this program to increase its contribution to the tribe in the future? Uh, first, first off, if we expand to a second year program, there can be uh, a project that is required of the students. Um, I, I taught um, at the graduate level where we took a class and, and trained them or provided them education in organizations and organizational development. So there's a number of things that can be done with that. And that translates into a project. And that's, this, that's really a two-course sequence. 
if if the project is chosen correctly it should contribute enough value to pay for the whole education and I've seen students that I've worked with where there's projects that produce you know ten twenty thirty thousand dollars worth of value they'd have to pay that to an outside consultant to come in and take the kind of initiative that comes from that project class now what's really really powerful here is that we could take on initiatives that cross functional boundaries and put teams together to work on that. So, so, so one thing is to think through how could we put a project course together that this ends in real um, change initiatives that, that, uh, that uh, raise the level of productivity and, and ra raise the level of customer service that Sam Manuel provides. Yeah, I'd like to express my gratitude to the tribe for having initiated this, this program. I think the final test, in a way, is not what I say about it, but what the students think about it. Uh, and uh, if it doesn't serve them, uh, it, it doesn't have much purpose at all. But I'd, I'd be prepared uh, 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 to, to rest the case for this on the students' reaction to it. Ask them what they get out of it, where they think it ought to go. That, I think, is a very useful input that it's, uh, it's important. They, they will tell you more about this program than those of us who run it, I think. Twice a week for two semesters a year, 10 to 12 students receive instruction and training in tribal law, the dynamics of leadership management, intergovernmental relations, and Native American history and culture. Upon completion of the tribal certificate program, San Manuel's leaders and employees have the instruction and knowledge base they need to best serve the unique economic, social, and cultural needs of a tribal nation. Every hour spent reading, studying, and learning in the Tribal Administration Certificate Program cultivates new ideas, insights, and inspirations. Every employee who emerges from the program helps to steer the decision-making success and progress of the San Manuel Tribal Government and the San Manuel Indian Bingo Casino and its 3,000 plus employees. Every graduating class means a new generation of potential leaders and innovators within the tribal government.